Welcome to 10 p.m. with Galinsky. It only happens here five nights a week. Good to see everybody. Right now, I'm going to bring on a very interesting man who runs an incredible company. Please welcome to the show, Michael Fomkin. Hey, Michael. Surprise. Good to hey, see you. Hey, how are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm so excited to be here tonight. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. We got, we got great people in the chat already lined up. Kathy Cato from the Queens World Film Festival is here. I think some of your students are here. Uh, Jose Laracuente, Samantha. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Hey, and, Jose. How you doing, buddy? Glad to see you here. Lucy Whitcast, Heather Prescott. Samantha. Oh, Heather Prescott. Everybody knows Heather Prescott. Right, Amy Alt. She's, she's been she's been bumping up her her Instagram lately. She's been blowing it up with some really amazing uh, shots. So, um, we've got John Gwarick in uh, from my childhood, and John Trafiro from my childhood. So, let's let's start with what's on your wall behind you. What's that record there? Oh, that's actually our that's actually our two Comma Club award. Actually, uh. It's, a, it's actually a software company that we work with, that we're partners with, a gentleman by the name of Russell Brunson. And it's actually an award that we received uh, for doing over a million dollars in sales uh, online. Um, interest, yeah, interesting story. We, when, when we first started the company 10 plus years ago, everything that we did was actually where people would actually come into the offices and actually do interviews with us. Um, we probably had a staff of like over 150 people. We had a call center. We had just a gigantic team. The company was growing by leaps and bounds. And one day, um, one of the individuals in the call center, was. we were trying to set the schedule. And if you never worked in a call center, people come and go. And it's, it's a lot of juggling of time and, and, and so forth. Um, and one of them made a comment about like, well, you know what? Um, you know, you really need, we don't really need you. And I was like, really? So I wind up going online and started researching how to automate systems. So um, that kind of one thing led to another. And we actually, we actually scaled the company back from having like 150 employees down to 10. Um, and we actually 10 X our, our revenue. We actually 10 X our, our growth, um, our reach. We went from being a small company in a local market to actually going nationwide uh, in a matter of less than a year. Tell us what the company does. Everybody is interested. VIP talent. Okay. Yeah. So what we do is we actually, we are the premier company for upcoming talent for models, actors, and musicians to have the opportunity to meet with high level executives in live event settings. So that's what, that's the basic premise of the company. And then recently we pivoted to where we became actually the first all online digital academy for actors, models, and musicians. And unlike like a traditional course where you're working with some acting coaches or you're working with a, you know, a music coach, we actually went out and we actually brought in coaches, um, people such as Ben Crawford, who's the currently, he's the phantom of the opera on Broadway. So imagine being interested in learning about Broadway and being able to actually learn from somebody at that level who's actually on Broadway themselves. Or we'll have somebody like Michael Yuri who is the host of the Drama Desk Awards. He's on Ugly Betty. Or we'll have somebody like Jim Benzing, who's uh, he's a major casting director for L'Oreal, The Gap. He works for Condé Nast. Uh, we have people who you know run IMG and Ford Models and Elite. So we actually bring in the very best people in the world. Because a long time ago, see, I've been in business now for, for a very long time. And the one mistake that I've always found people make is when they're trying to do something and they need help, you need to have a coach, you need to have somebody who, who knows what they're doing. The thing is, is always there's so many options, there's so many choices out there, so how do you decide who to work with, right? Because a lot of times you may wanna get your car fixed and you go, to, you know, you try to find the least expensive mechanic and then somehow things just, it just doesn't work right, right? It's just, it's never the same thing. You kind of get what you pay for. So I says, you know what, if I'm gonna do something, if I wanna know about chess, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hire a grandmaster. If I want to know about how to run Facebook ads, I'm going to go out and hire the best person to do Facebook ads. So I says, why not apply, apply that same principle to the entertainment industry? We've already had a, a long track record. We already worked with, you know, people from Saturday Night Live and people from HBO and Tyra Banks and all these amazing individuals 
who literally have decades of knowledge at their fingertips. And I says, why not create an academy around that? Why not bring in the best people in the world to actually work and coach and mentor people? Do you find that these people, these successful people, these stars, so to speak, are willing to throw their hat in the ring? You know, it's a really interesting concept because I kind of had that same thought process. I says, you know what, would somebody be willing who's worked so hard and built up this career, would they be willing to take time out of their day to give back to somebody else? And I was actually a little bit nervous about that. As I started talking to them and approaching them, they said, you know what, I would love to do this. They were actually like excited. And I think there's this realization, like even in myself, when I was first starting out, I really, I didn't have time. Like people would always come to me and have a million questions. I remember it was like, there was like a joke in the office. It was always like, Mike, do you have a minute? The moment I heard that, I always knew, okay, it's going to be some kind of question. I don't really have time to do this. But all of a sudden you reach a certain point in your life where you have systems in place, you have a certain level of success. And then all of a sudden you just want to share that information. Like, like, and I think also at the same time, you go through like a learning experience because as you're teaching somebody and as you're showing somebody ways to do things, it actually helps improve your craft. So like the more I can talk about acting, the more I could talk about music, the more I could talk about business, I start making this realization, not only am I able to give back and help somebody, but I'm actually also being able to have that gratitude for myself, being able to say, hey, I helped change somebody's life, but at the same time, I'm getting to like relive moments and kind of keep improving and tweaking them out. Gotcha. So, it, it, and I found this the same thing with these people, the more successful they are, the more they're willing to give back and the more they want to be able to share that with the world. Uh, we've got some comments in the chat, uh, by the way, Jamie joined us. Winnie is with us. Welcome guys. Oh, team Winnie. Go team Winnie. Um, so uh, Tammy T has a question and Callie has a question. Tammy wants to know, how do you get these professionals to join your company? And I think you just explained that. You just ask, right? You just go out and you ask. And, and if you can offer them some money, cool. And I know from working with you, some of them don't take their honorarium and some of them do. Yeah, we, we do. We, we, we practice what's called like a dream 100. So a dream 100 means is that I, I, I put together a list of the people that I feel can make the biggest impact on, on my, the people that we work with, the people that we want to serve, the people that we want to help. And what I do is I kind of connect the dots. You know, it's like when I, you know, just to kind of even use yourself as an example, when, when I first met you, it was through a relationship that I had with the vice at that, that time with, um, the current vice president of Universal um, of Warner Brothers, right? He was a casting director for Warner Brothers. And we developed this relationship. We had an agent who was a small agent, just the tiniest agent in Philadelphia, but we, we served her. We, we brought her new talent. We, we made her a part of our community. And then she said, hey, I know this person who's really phenomenal. And then that person introduced us to you. And then you introduced us to Pat Annis. And next thing I know, I'm walking across the stage at the Tony Awards. So it's kind of like you, how you get these people involved is like, it's like planting seeds. The seeds that you plant, you may not harvest them instantaneously. Like right now, today, I'll give you a great example. One of my dream 100 people to have speak at my events is Tony Robbins, right? So Tony Robbins, you know, he's a motivational speaker. He works with some of the biggest names in the, in the world. and I've been to all his events and I've been following him for years and I had the, you know, the opportunity to meet him a few times, but I haven't had that opportunity to work with him directly, to have him come and actually be a part of our audience. So I said, well, how do I get his attention? So like today we, we did a coaching call. We had, he has like a hand selected group of 10 coaches that personally work with him. And I said, Hey, could, you know, can I get one of your guys to come out and train our talent? kind of, you know, give them, you know, the exposure to what Tony teaches. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So what it is, is the seeds that I planted today, I may not be able to work with Tony Robbins tomorrow, but each time I kind of grow that seed a little bit, there's going to come a time where one day I'm going to be on the phone and we say, hey, there's something I can do for you, or there's something he can do for us. And all of a sudden we have that relationship. So it doesn't mean, you know, I'm giving an example of like the highest possible person. They're in my radar. They're in my world. So if you're an actor, a model, a musician, you have to build those relationships. Like how I start, like I love going on set and I talk to everybody. To me, like the director's important, 
but the makeup artist is important. The people that are doing craft services, right? The people that are bringing the food, they're important, the security. I make everyone feel as equal as possible and I build a relationship with every single person on set. And you know who actually, um, wh where I actually learned that from was from Will Smith. If you've ever had, Will Smith the actor, right? Everybody knows Will Smith. If you ever had the opportunity to work with him on set, he treats everybody equal. Like he comes, he sings, he dances, he tells jokes. Doesn't matter if you're a background extra or you're, you know, principal cast, he makes everyone feel welcome. And that's what I do. Like everyone that I meet, and I always, the first thing I always say to myself is what can I do to help them? How could I better serve them? What could I, who could I connect them with? And I think me and you are very much alike like that because everyone knows Robert knows everybody. Like I've been watching your show now and like every night I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe he has Richard Stratton on or he has this person and that person. And it's just amazing because knowing that one person, it gives you access to their entire black book of contacts, Absolutely. but you have to have that relationship. Like yeah. you're serving them by bringing them on your show and giving them the chance to share their message with others. So I, I really so impressed with everything you've been doing and just really honored to be here tonight. Thank you. You too, and that's why you're here. Uh, let's go to the chat. There's some questions that are popping up. Um, the show is a little short, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna request that, that in order to get to these questions, let's see if we can get as concise with your answers as possible because there, there's a lot of questions popping up and I, I'd like to satisfy everyone. By the way, Ellis Hennigan just joined us who I would love to have on the show, Ellis, hit me back. He's a writer, he writes for um, a lot of major uh, media outlets, and he's also an author. Um, James Turcott has a question. Is the list always changing? How, yes. how long do these stars commit for? Um, the list is always changing, it's always growing. One of the little kind of internal things that we have here is we always try to outdo ourselves. So when we do an event, we're always gonna say, hey, we're gonna grow, we're gonna expand, we're always reaching for the stars. Um, so the list is always consistently changing, it's always improving, but we like to always balance it out because we like to have, we know there are different people at different points in their journey, yeah. so we like to be able to match them with people who can help them the most. Absolutely. Because where you are today, like people all the time, they say to me, you know, Mike, one day I wanna be just like you and I know it may take me 10 years to get there. Well, great. But in 10 years, when you get to the point where I'm at in my career, well, guess what? I've moved ahead 10 years. So you're always kind of, you always have to realize that success is that journey. Yeah. So the people that, you know, you want to go out and bring a part of your life, you want to see who can you work with now. But the number one rule is, is what do you bring to them? Why would they be interested in working with you? You can't just kind of go out and say, hey, I just want to work with you because you're cool. There has to be a relationship there. And I think that's the hardest thing most people have, like kind of working through how do they bring value to the table. And that's one of the things that we teach them in our courses. Wally Green is in the chat right now. He's coming up as a guest in a couple of weeks. He should be at your virtual summit, which we will be talking about. Right now, everybody's going nuts in here. Scott Milvey says, Will Smith's story, that was Robin Williams uh, as well. I was an extra in Patch Adams. He treated everyone great. Uh, Jamie Mita says, yes, my life has changed because of VIP has proven to work. So you got a lot of people in here that are already in your program. And speaking of the program, let's go to your website and just take a quick brush through some of the pages here. This is the VIP IgniteLive.com website. And this is where you guys are recruiting people who want to break into the business, correct? That is correct. Yeah, they're right there's Tashini from Disney's The Lion King. So that's actually a sizzle reel from uh, one of our events held at Caroline's. I actually think uh, you were actually the host of that event at Caroline's. That was actually from a few years ago. Uh, um, you can see here, um, what we do is we practice what's called like a talent framework. We do what's called the three Ps. So three Ps is like proof, proximity, and power, which means in, in order for people to be successful in this industry, the first thing you have to do is you have to have proximity to people that, that can help you, that can help move the dial forward. So, and proximity doesn't necessarily mean being in the same room. Like right now, me and you have proximity, right? Yeah. Now, based upon that proximity, I'm on your show. Well, guess what? That's now giving me proof of concept. It's showing to the world, hey, I'm out there. I'm making things happen. I'm, 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 I'm gaining this proof. Maybe it's something as, as, you know, an Instagram post and somebody's sharing it. And then based upon having that proximity to the people that can help change, you know, your life, you now have that proof which shows to others. 
Then what you now have is the third P, which is power, which means that now you have that ability. And, and we kind of did three Ps, but what I really like to say is authority. Like right now, like you're an authority in your industry because you have this show. You created this show. You're building these viewers up every day. It's becoming more popular. You know, you're getting bigger and better speakers. So you're actually, for most people that already work in this industry, that's it. they're already following this. So what we kind of did is we took the science of this, the tactics and the strategies, and then we broke it down. And, and, and based upon that, we have what's considered a talent framework. So like what makes a successful actor? How do you go from just an idea and a concept to becoming the next Ben Crawford, becoming the next Will Smith? And then of course, from there, as people are growing, we have our inner circle. So we work with all levels of experience, okay? You know, we give them the framework, we give them the proximity, we, the events are everything they need. We're currently working on a virtual summit where people are going to be working with agents and managers and casting directors, not only from the United States, but from Athens, from London, from Milan. Like, I, I know we have a lot of our talent on, the, on this call tonight, so I don't want to give away too much because we have some real crazy secret stuff here. But you can see, you know, the people we work with, they've created the careers and the brands of some of the biggest names in the world. And our talent get that opportunity to work with them consistently. Why don't, why don't you give me an exclusive and just give one secret away from this virtual summit, somebody that's going to be at the summit. So for those of you who don't know, while you think about that, some of you out there who don't know who are new to uh, VIP, and by the way, I'll do a couple quick shout outs. B. Kim Taylor, great writer in the chat, says this is so helpful. Keith Davis just joined us. Hi, Keith. Mary Pat is with us. Sasha Paul is with Mary us. Pat. We love Mary Pat. Superstar, successful yeah. model, actress. She's yeah. just blowing it up. And, and you do a lot. You've done a lot of live events. And I've been to these events. I've helped host and coach. And these events are really exciting because, like you said, you can walk right up to somebody like Shabaka Henley and, and talk to him and, and get a moment with somebody who's doing living the dream, so to speak. Um, yeah. So the virtual event, I imagine you're going to have that same kind of ability to connect with people virtually um and now give us who is the secret secret person one person that you're going to showcase well, I'm, I'm not going to give a major name because i want to keep that so i'll give i'll give a smaller one but even though i'm going to say it's a smaller person i'm going to say the name of the company um they're really powerful in the industry so i think for a lot of times a lot of people don't realize you know i, I used to tell people all the time like you know you know, who do you feel would be the most important person to meet to help your acting career? Tom Cruise or Tom Cruise's manager? And a lot of times when somebody's brand new, they'll get it, oh, I want to meet Tom Cruise. And I'm like, well, wait a second. If you're trying to get into the industry, Tom Cruise is like your competition. The person you really want to get to meet with is his manager, the person who helped get him to where he is because he has that framework. So um, one, of the, one of the individuals we're bringing in is from Atlanta. Um, he owns a company called Slam Management. Um, and they actually handle the casting for Tyler Perry Studios, for The Walking Dead, for the Marvel movies. So this is literally like right now, Atlanta's opening up. Like Atlanta, they're going to start filming there. So this is somebody who literally has the pulse, not only on all the auditions, not only on all the castings, the celebrities. He has that proximity. He has that proof. He has that authority. But he also now knows exactly how this industry is transitioning. So that information alone is so valuable because now as there are so many smaller film companies, they're figuring it out. Here's somebody who's kind of already right there on the cusp of how this new world is gonna work, how the industry is gonna move forward. And with that information, even if you're a brand new actor, model, musician, it gives you a jump. It gives, you know, the difference between boiling water and warm water is one degree. So by having that one degree, that smallest bit of information, having that contact with something like Slam Management based out of Atlanta, now gives you that acceleration. It allows you to have information that other actors and other competitors do not have. And you only get that exclusively at the VIP Ignite Virtual Summit coming up in June. Yes, well said. Um, can you tell us what are the dates for that? And is it still possible people could apply? What they need uh, People could still apply online. Uh, it is, you have to go through an interview process. Uh, it's not open to the public. So it's not something you can buy a ticket for. I know there are so many summits and conferences. You just go online and you buy a ticket. I, I would love for a business, as I'm a businessman. At the end of the day, I'm a businessman. 
So I would love to be able to do that. I would love to be able to host an event with a million people, but we can't because of the level of speakers that we have. It has to be kind of exclusive. We want to make sure that people, that it's the right fit for the speakers. Um, so the event is the last weekend in June. Um, it's a three-day event. Um, and then we also have some surprises going on. There's going to be a virtual registration. We're going to have an online networking party with music. Um, we're sending out swag boxes. So everyone who's registered, they're getting T-shirts and all kinds of cool stuff. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so much fun. We're introducing some new technology, some new concepts. So we're really, we're taking everything we've learned for the past 10 plus years, and we're gonna turn this virtual summit into something that's gonna set the standard on how virtual summits are held online. Something that I've noticed about what you do, which is you're really amazing at recruiting uh, new talent, creating new working actors, models, dancers, and singers out of that new talent. Um, but you guys don't do a lot of press. You don't get press coverage. You don't even, from what I understand, seek press coverage. What's the strategy behind that? Are you just trying to keep yourself at the nice, you know, fine machine? Do you think the press interferes with it? Um, I, you know, you're really right about that. And, you know, we, 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 we literally have over 100,000 applicants per year currently on average. And, and that's like, we could probably scale that up to a million. Um, you know, when we started this concept, our mission statement was to make the event small. I just wanted something that was almost like a social gathering, you know, like almost like going to a wedding, it's 100 people, 125 people, 10 people at a table, everyone got to know each other, you have a community. When you scale these events up to 5,000, 10,000 people, you lose that. So, you know, you know, going out and having press and doing advertising and all that, it's just something we've never really had a need for. Um, with the current situation with the world, the way it's going, there are a lot of companies out there that do these large events. Uh, they've been around for years and years. And I, I've seen a few of them like already reached out to us and they're like, listen, you know, we don't think we're going to make it. We're thinking about closing up shop and going out of business. You know, is there any, you know, can we partner up with you? And, you know, so we're, we're, you know, we're in consideration for negotiations of possibly purchasing out, purchasing out some of our competitors and possibly going to a, a more large scale global type of event. Um, but we're going to do it a lot differently than the way they did it. Um, we're going to kind of keep that small feeling to it, but being able to scale it up large. So at that point, I think you'll see a lot more press. We have been featured, obviously, in Forbes, Entrepreneur. The Huffington Post. Uh, we were just recently on Broadway World. We did a, a charity event with Nucha's um, um, empanadas. Yeah. We donated over 200 lunches to uh, Mount Sinai Hospital for first responders. You are a big part of that. We really we appreciate and we thank you so much for that. Um, so that was an amazing opportunity for us. I had mentioned it to you. You guys were wide open for it. Nucha's.com was open for it and simply delivering a hot 200 hot meals to these people in the emergency room and they, they loved it. It's 10.30. The show is officially over unless Chatters will give us some hearts and thumbs up and you've got a few more minutes. Will you stick around? I definitely have a few more minutes. All right. So the way we do this is the only way to start overtime of the show is to play a game called Five Objects. You haven't seen any of these objects. I'm going to show you one, them one by one. Just respond, you know, quick response, gut response, a story, a thought, what they, what they, how they hit you, okay? Yeah, I'm ready. First object is packing tape. Oh, packing tape. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh my God, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, okay, so for gut response to me is Christmas time. I think of Christmas time when I see packing tape. The next one is the queen. Oh my God, uh, Maurice Ashley. He's, he's the first African-American grandmaster chess player. I just had a great conversation with him tonight. We're actually, he's actually gonna be doing, coming on board for our podcast motivational speaker he's an amazing individual gotcha. so that was a good one that was an easy one good. an apple oh an apple a teaching uh first grade school cool um a guitar oh a guitar oh oh my god uh what's his name wesley um the uh uh the musician from la he uh did guardians of the galaxy oh uh, what's, his, what's his name remind me his name Willie Wesley. yes wesley wisely yes and then the last one Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
Oh, Obi Wan Kenobi. I just watched the new Star Wars movie, so that's the first thing that pops into my mind. Did you enjoy it? Um, no, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Luisa's in the house. Uh, B. Kim Taylor just said no, just. Uh, let's see who else just showed up. Shantae White is in the house. Wally Green wants to know where to register for this. Uh, it's VIPIgniteLive.com. Uh, B. Kim says, sounds incredible. But Mark David Bernbach has a question. What do you feel about a documentary film on pause incorporating Zoom interviews into the film, like the interview you're having right now? I think that's a great idea. I actually, uh, if you have a, a, um, um, Apple Plus TV, there's a show on there, Mythic Quest. They just did a whole like brand new episode where it was all done on Zoom and it was absolutely brilliant. It, it was definitely such an interesting thing. I, you know, communication is there. Being able to, you know, any platform that you can be able to communicate ideas and get your message out to the world, it worked. So being able to do a documentary and interview, like this is a moment in time. We're all living through this right now and you want to be able to document it. Because, you know, there's going to be a point 20, 30 years from now, they're going to talk about this, you know, so the things that people are doing, you know, right now is going to be the greatest transition of wealth ever. You know, there are so many ideas that are going to come out of this and so many changes and, you know, the world's just shifting and you just want to go with it. You know what I mean? So if you have that idea to do a documentary, do it, make it happen. What is something that has this experience has changed for you? What has, what has changed for you, whether it's, business or personal, something that's, that's upended your thinking in a significant way? Um, I, I think the fact of being able, being able to pivot and shift very rapidly is something I didn't always believe I could do. But when what happens is, you know, there's an old saying when the, the, you burn the ships and you have no choice but to survive and create something new, that definitely is something that I've seen a huge mind shift and breakthrough with myself personally. And then the other thing I think too is this realization of how much I, I did not appreciate being able to travel, being able to just go outside and watch a sunset. Like for the past few weeks, every night, you know, I'll go out and I'll kind of count the stars, you know, I'll, you know, listen to the birds or in the morning, I'll wake up in the early and we'll just see the sunrise, like just this appreciation for the world itself, where before I was just so buzzing back and forth, I never had that moment to slow down. So I think that it's really, I have this appreciation that I hope to never lose, that when the world, you know, is back open 100%, that everyone still takes the time to appreciate the small things in life, how much they really mean. Excellent. Let's look at a couple more photographs from uh, the work that you do. Um, Sasha Paul Knopf says, I love hearing New York accents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is one of the... Um, classes right this is the typical yeah this was this was an online coaching call this was um looks like it was this was probably fuji ruiz um he is uh, a major player in the high fashion um industry for models uh he represents a lot of huge names um his career is is, is you know well over 10 plus years so he's uh he was on vh1 he was actually a host on a show on vh1 so this is actually one of the group classes um you know, we, we kind of, we do like a little breakout sessions. We, you know, talk about things. Um, this one here, this is Jim Benzing. So this is somebody who is the uh, head of uh, casting for L'Oreal, um, The Gap, Banana Republic. Um, the most nicest, amazing person you could ever imagine. Um, this looks like, this looks like, oh, oh my God. This was one of our variety hours. So every Friday we'll do like a variety hour where the talent get to come on board um, and they get to perform. So it's, it's always done on Friday night, and it's just meant to be able to come, blow off steam, have fun, relax. So this was a costume party. We had an online costume. We had Princess Leia there with, with, uh, with uh, Luke Skywalker. We had, you know, uh, we had you were there. There you go with the crazy hair. And it, it was so much fun. So every week we do a different type of theme party. Uh, we had a prom one weekend. Everyone got to graduate. Uh, we're doing a five-minute um, play. Oh, uh, there's my great, my one of my closest and dearest friends, Randy Jones, the cowboy from the Village People. Uh, this was this was a pretty long night in New York City. Me and Randy put a couple of down that night. Um, but we actually sat up all night. One of the cast members from The Sopranos. 
a really great guy. That was at an opening of one of our shows in New York City. So at, at your events um, and shows, there's going to, that's a beautiful uh, depiction of the range of talent from the cowboy, from the village people to Dominic Tianisi from the Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said earlier in the interview, it's something for everyone at every level. And I've noticed that as well. People even, you know, it's hard to put on a summit or an, or an event where you've got people who are just starting out and people who actually have gotten somewhere uh, with it and satisfy everybody's needs for what they want. But you guys do a great job of that because you have such a diverse group of talent and speakers as talent. Somebody uh, once told me we have a, an eccentric and eclectic group of individuals. Absolutely. Somebody very, very wise individual told me that many, many years ago, and it stuck with me. Turco Ono has a question here. Um, Turco Ono in our chat. What was your impetus to start the company? Did, had you thought about this while you were in college? Did it come in a dream? Did you steal the concept? Ha! Ah! Well, I actually, I, I used to be in the restaurant industry. I'm not going to, it's a long story. I actually have a book called Finding Fame, The Insider's Guide to the Entertainment Industry. They can actually um, find online, download and read. Maybe I'll post a link in your chat later for people that get access to that. But I worked in the restaurant industry. From the restaurant industry, I've always had that fascination with the entertainment industry. So probably well over 10 years ago, I, I bought a franchise that was a, they were the first concept for online modeling and, and kind of bringing, bringing the world of, of fashion to online. So like now you see like when you go to Ford, well, I mean, a click, they have like digital portfolios, like everything's digital, right? You can submit your headshots. They were the company that developed that. So this is, so before this all existed, they were the ones who developed it. Unfortunately, the company didn't work out, but near the end of when the company was kind of not really doing well, they had this idea of doing an event. And I, I, I kind of took that idea and they wanted to do a large scale event. I said, you know what? I just want to do something really simple. And it was, we, we actually started our company during a writer strike. So like, we didn't even realize what was going on, but we just, we started at the worst, the worst possible time imaginable. And it was just, you know, one of those, everything lined up, you know, as, as you know, you know, people always like to say that, you know, you're an overnight success, but an overnight success takes 20 years. And, and it, it really does. It's, it's yeah. just it's building upon layering, you know, the different things you learn. And the things people don't see and they don't know. Got another question here. Um, I'm not sure. Excuse me. Uh, got a sneeze. Mm. Bless you. Yeah, well, oh look at that. Oh, my God. No mask, no nothing. Whoa. Uh, Michael, are you in the Comma Club? The Academy made an impact for the talent from this. Thanks. Uh, sometimes people's questions aren't that clear to me. Um, so anyway, are you in the comma club? And then somebody else has a question. Do you think going forward, the entertainment industry is going to create a smaller door for opportunity in young talent, people who are coming in? I'm not sure what that means. Smaller door. I don't know if you do. Um, I think probably when you look at the entertainment industry, most people think of it. If you think of the entertainment industry as a house, most people think of the traditional way of entering by going to the front door. But in reality, there's lots of different ways to get in. One is you could just, you could just have that amazing look. You could have that amazing talent. While other people, you may be working background. You're building up relationships as a writer. There are so many people, you know, I find success leaves clues. And for anyone who's interested in this business, my greatest advice is like, go on Wikipedia and like look up that person you would like your career. If you could have, if you could have a career like somebody, like a like a, a, a Denzel Washington as an example, like reverse engineer his career. How did he start? Who did he study with? Who did he work with? So, you know, the industry right now, I'm gonna be honest with you currently, it's a lot harder to get into. Like before, you know, with the unions, you could, you know, you could do background work, you could get your waivers. Now they're not going to have that. I think, you know, obviously it's going to transition, but, you know, ways, if I was just starting out, I would be wanting to learn every single way to get on set, whether I was, whether I was doing the lighting, security, like anything just to get on set, because those are the people they're going to be using as extras. They're going to be people using as background work. So, you know, I, I, right now, 
with all, you know, with the streaming wars, Apple TV, HBO Max, you know, Hulu, there's so much need for writers. There's so much need for content. Like in the worst times ever in the history of, of, of the modern day world, whenever the economy went down, right? Whenever something bad would happen, guess what? Entertainment industry always went up. People will always have a need to be entertained. It's ingrained in us. It's a part of who we are from 10,000 years ago, writing stories and pictures on walls to today creating billion dollar worldwide blockbusters. So there's so much out there and all it just takes is just being creative. Like there's an opportunity for everyone in this you are business. A hopeful. You're a very hopeful man. It's very good. Um, the, we're gonna close up in a couple of minutes here. Um, a lot of good words in the comment. My, he's the best. Um, let's see. Uh, God bless you. Well, that was for my sneeze. <laughs> Wally, want, Wally Green wants to know, is that a gaming chair? Oh, yes, it is. Actually, it is. I got three of them. I got two here and I got two at my house. Callie Greenberg. Two, two here and one at my house. Callie Greenberg says opportunities are everywhere and I'm welcoming Nancy Lynch, and Lynch Hutchings into the chat. Uh, welcoming Joanna Beckson, the great Joanna Beckson. Ooh, Joy Powell. We got, so we got all our heavy hitters here tonight. Wow. Yeah. Alicia Joy Powell is with us as well. Oh, yes. Alicia Joy Powell. She was on our call this afternoon with Tony Robbins' coach. I love her. She is such the kind hearted person. She just pours passion into them. She, oh my God, she is the definition of a coach. She is just phenomenal. She um, can, and she does it all. Like, she, I, I am her biggest fan. Like, I am so honored that she's here tonight. Here. Got That's amazing. I'm just, I'm, oh my God, I'm like I'm so happy right now. I know, right? I'm like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing pants? Yes, I am. Yeah. I always make sure. Yep. Make a lot sure. of people aren't wearing pants on these calls, just so you know. <laughs> That's okay. Kelly uh, Greenberg, hashtag world is your roster. Nice. Yes. Um, Mark David Birnbach, he's got he's tapping you. He's getting some free consultation here. I can see it. <laughs> Question here. What is your feeling when CAA expresses interest in a distribution deal based on a documentary trailer? I don't feel good about it. Uh, CAA is a huge company. I, I would definitely, if, if they're showing interest in it, you have the right people knocking on your door. And if it's your first project out and, and you have some kind of interest like that, you want to be able to go for it because it's going to give you the proximity and it's going to give you the authority. Because think about it, when you're a writer, the hardest thing in the world to do is to get that first story sold. And it doesn't have to be the story that's worth a billion dollars. It could be worth $10 because that $10 is the seed, right? Because money at the end of the day, it's just a tool right? Your success is based upon your impact on the world, what your legacy is going to be. And, and, and money is just a result of success. So if he has an opportunity like that, I would definitely take it. They're a great company. There's no reason not to. Jack Fuller says, I love your positivity, seeing our current state of our world as opportunity for growing closer in relationships with others. Thanks and keep it going, Michael. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jack Fuller is an amazing guy. He's out in, um, on the West Coast. And uh, he's a tennis pro. Oh, awesome. All right. Um, so we're going to finish up. So people, if you want to shout out any more thank yous, go right ahead. Um, but I want to ask, what are you binge watching right now? And or what do you suggest people take a look at? One or two shows. Um, I've, been, I've, been, I've, I've been watching all the episodes of Billions. I love that show. I've been watching Narcos and Ozark. Those are my three shows right now. Have you watched Dead to Me yet? No, not yet. Dead to me is a great show. Uh, I, that's the thing I'm on right now. It's, a, it's twisted. It's one of those very twisted stories. Um, if you were not, this is my last question for you. And before I do that, actually, though, I want to po point out one more time. This is the site, um, VIP Ignite Live. This is the site to go to to learn about the upcoming virtual summit that's happening at the end of June. There still is time to apply. And I can tell you, as somebody who's been to the summit, there is a vetting process. It's not like you get to just pay money and show up. You can't do that. Everybody there gets, it's interesting what you guys do. You really train people. Even if they don't show up, they still get an understanding of what they need to do to prepare. And if they do show up, then it's great because they get that plus. Yep, that is true. Actually, actually we, uh, 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 we do an online presentation. It's like two hours long. Literally, 
we've had people who have been in SAC for 25 plus years leave the call going, I've learned more <laughs> on this call in two and a half hours than I've learned in like the past five years. Yes. And for people who are brand new to the industry, we literally give them uh, we literally give them a roadmap to follow. Well, like, I know we literally that. give them a step-by-step -step plan. And that's without them even coming to the event, I, I, just I, showing up for the, the free presentation online. I've watched that. I've watched that. And you are giving away some key pieces of knowledge, yeah. some serious ingredients for free at that. One more question. Uh, two things. Mark David Bernbach, who I know I will connect you with because he wants to speak offline with you about this document. Okay. And then James Turcot, Turco Ono, um, Advice for young talent that has been rejected. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, the best advice is every, every no leads up to a yes. Um, you, you, you know, people, you know, I hear casting directors all the time. They say, you know what? Uh, you know, don't, don't take it to heart. You know what? Try to figure out, you know, I, I believe that you should try to figure out what you could do to improve. You know what I mean? It's like literally, it's like, it's like watching football or watching a wrestler, right? When you have a coach, a coach doesn't have to teach you how to be a great wrestler. What they can do is they can look at the tape and they can just make the slightest adjustments to all of a sudden have you overcome that opponent. So, you know, I think for somebody who's dealing with rejection, I believe they have the heart, they have the spirit, they have the passion, and they have the talent. It's just you need somebody from the outside, right? It's like if you're staring too close at the board, you can't see the move. So by having somebody being able to take that, you know, 20,000 foot view, the slightest adjustments will change that person's life. You're getting great responses right now. Wally Green says, never, ever give up. No matter what, you keep going. You keep trying. Stay passionate and believe, and I promise you it will happen. Callie Greenberg says, love the positivity and the good vibes. Mark David Birnbach says, rejection builds success. Embrace the failures. Very, love that. Very in line with what you're talking about. Final question of the night. If you weren't a star maker, if you weren't a producer, if you weren't somebody that was – here on this earth to encourage and enable other people's dreams in the entertainment industry, what would you be? An artist, a painter. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You smile. You should start yeah. taking classes or something. I know, right? Yeah. I got, I got some extra time now. I'm going to start working on that. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you for being with me, man. I really appreciate it. I'm excited for the summit that's coming up at the end of June. We've been dropping the URL in the chat so people know where to go to learn more. I'll make some connections with you with some of these people in the, in the chat. And I really appreciate you taking the time, Mike. All right. I appreciate being here. Thank you to everybody who showed up tonight. Always believe. I am so appreciative. Thank you, Mr. Galinsky. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. I had a great time. Me too.